Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This reading is going to be focusing on what you can do to improve, but I just sort of settled on that question as the most general and simple way of looking at it. But really you can look at this as what you can do if you're looking to like self-actualize or evolve your consciousness or ascend or just succeed in the business world or at school or whatever it is that you're looking to kind of step up and move on upwards that's sort of what this is is looking at and we're actually going to be using a sort of pyramid spread for this so i think it's going to be kind of cool um so go ahead and pick your card it's card number one card number two and card number three and just if you're wondering why i have like gray cards on a black background here uh don't worry the others the face sides of these cards uh, are much lighter and so it's going to look better once I flip the cards up. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you guys in your reading. Okay pile one welcome to your reading. Right away here there's just so much water energy. <laughs> we have the moon which this moon card actually has a pool at the bottom and you know two of cups, ace of cups, eight of cups and uh, in the center of it all is this death card. So, you know, I hope nobody's nervous about the death card. This is, I always take it as actually a good sign, especially in a reading like this, where we're looking at what you can do to improve or evolve. Um, you know, this is, this is a reading about making changes and making great strides like forward and upward. So the fact that you have the death card at the center here um, and, you know, leading up into the Knight of Wands, I see that this, uh, whatever strides you're going to be making, uh, you guys actually are going to be making some kind of drastic changes, but they're absolutely going to work out for the better. And at the end of it all, you're, you're going to be this knight of wands where you're charging. Like, look at this guy. He's charging off. He's got his magic wand. He's going to be able to bring his message out into the world. I feel like you guys are have been really feeling stuck in a rut, stuck in a, a kind of lifestyle or way of being that is, is really not suiting you. And that's why you need to burn up like the Phoenix and so that you can, you can ascend. Like, look, look at this, this, let me bring this up here. This crow has died. His skeleton, his skeleton is here uh, rotting on the ground, but he, you know, still full, fully formed. He is rising. He is rising guys. He is, he is like the Phoenix here. Um, so you might have to be leaving something behind. Um, and with the moon card off to the left here, you might be leaving some kind of illusions. Look at this card. This moon actually has the crow in it. I, I really like this art. I love this deck, the crow tarot deck. Uh, but this moon card is rather sinister looking to me it has a bit of a graveyard vibe like a cemetery vibe uh which you know it really pairs up well with that death card and actually when i just looked at this um crow inside the moon here this really reminded me have you guys ever like taken an egg like a chicken egg or any other kind of egg i guess where there was a chick growing inside and if you put it on a, a type of light you can it reflects and you can see the silhouette of the embryo inside. That <laughs> that is that is it's what this is what this looks like. It it's like this crow is about to hatch out of the moon. Wow. That that's really cool. It it's like this moon card is um almost like a butterfly symbol, you know, going through the whole cocooning phase and then hatching out. And that syncs up so so well with this death card. He's, you know, leaving his shell behind and, and ascending. And this crow is going to be hatching out of this egg. This egg, the moon, always speaking of emotional disturbances. At least that's like my personal relationship with the moon is the moon like travels through his moon phases. I really can feel um, the the effects of like what sign the moon is in, especially for the full moons and the new moons. Um, so I guess I actually kind of have a bit of a fractured relationship with the moon. Uh, if that's coming up or maybe you guys do as well, you, you could be your emotions guys could be affected by the moon cycles and without you even knowing it. So that might be something to look into. You know, you can start just by paying attention to the full moon and the new moon if you don't already. Um, and then taking a look at, uh, you know, when the moon is changing signs, cause it does it every two or three days. 
And it really, in my experience, colors the background of everybody's lives, whether they are noticing it or not. So maybe you guys are hatching out of some kind of emotional instability or feeling trapped, feeling trapped inside of a, a small environment, a, almost like you're trapped inside of an egg. Has your life become rather stifling, rather small, rather limited? Because the rest of this is you guys busting out of your limitations. And so the bottom of this spread here is like the foundations of kind of the first steps for what you guys need to do in order to improve your lives in order to ascend. This this reading really speaks to me about some kind of ascending energy, whether that is ascending the corporate ladder or, you know, ascending back to source. Um, I don't care, but it's a it's like a ladder energy here. Um, and the other card at the bottom here, you know, moon, death and two of cups. Look at that. These two, two crows bringing this spiraling energy kit together, spiraling up into this lion. The two cups is always that kind of lover's light. You, this can be manifesting externally or internally. Either you are partnering up with somebody, you know, either as a soulmate or a, uh, Sorry, guys, I just got really distracted because some uh, Canada geese just uh, flew by my window honking really loudly. I don't know if, that can if the microphone picked that up. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Two of Cups. This can be manifesting externally or internally, as always, and it'll depend on, on your personal situation, right? If this is manifesting in a, a partnership, you know, that could be romantic or business or creative, Um and this person will be, it's almost like they'll be helping you die, but obviously not literally. They're going to help you go through this death energy. They're going to help you hatch out of this egg and go through this death energy. Um, but the death energy is always just that, that transformation. So they're going to be helping you. They're going to be helping you ascend, guys. And if this isn't just an external figure for you, uh, it can be, you know, a spiritual figure, like an etheric figure, your, your guides, your angels, or your ancestors. However, you guys communicate with, you know, non-incorporeal -in beings. Um, or it could just be another aspect of yourself, your higher self. You know, th this two of cups and lover's energy also always with that internal alchemy. Um, and I really see this as bringing in, because there's all of these cups, all of this water here. You're bringing in, you guys are getting in touch with your intuition, with your emotions. Maybe you've been shutting that off. Maybe you've been feeling emotionally unstable for a lot of your life. So you've been actually shutting off your emotions, um, trying to be more rational, trying to be more logical, trying to um, taking medication to numb yourself out, self-medicating to numb yourself out. And always, guys, never any judgment here. You know, I've taken prescri prescription medications. I've taken anti antipsychotics, antidepressants, um, anticonvulsants. <laughs> I've drank too much. Um, I've done other things that weren't good for me. So, uh, you know, if you guys have been doing that, that's like, I, I get it. Like no, no judgment here. I don't want anybody to feel like, you know, I'm telling you like, uh, you know, get off your medications and stop drinking because that, you know, I, I'm in the same boat as you guys. I've been in the same boat. Um, so yeah. So if you have been numbing your, yourself out or avoiding your emotions, that is like, over. You guys are freeing yourself. Like I, I just, I keep coming back, back to this. You're hatching out of the egg. <laughs> the crow is going to come out of the egg. The crow is coming out of his dead body. And these two crows are blending themselves together and, you know, creating a new ascension energy. This is, <sighs> so you have a foundation here of all of this upward spiraling energy. I'm really reminded of the song Lateralis by Tool. Uh, if you guys are into Tool, then you obviously know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, uh, listen to that. Go listen to Tool. I mean, anything by Tool is just just so amazing. Um, but if you just want to listen to one song, La Lateralis, it's like L-A-T-E-R-A-L-U-S. I think that's how it's spelled. I always pr pronounce it Lateralis, but I think people pronounce it Lateralis. 
Um, cause it's about lateral movement and spirals and pushing the envelope to spiral out and keep going and bringing that up because that's what you guys are doing. You're going to be spiraling out and upwards in a big, big way because your second level here, kind of your, uh, the stage where you're, you've, you've gone through your, your Phoenix cycle, you've broken out of this egg and you're heading upwards. You're going to be going into your ace of cups and your eight of cups. Let's take a look at this beautiful ace of cup, cup, cups card. <sighs> really, um, are those peonies down there or water lilies? Pe peonies have been haunting me lately, but this Ace of Cups is, this is going to be replenishing your soul. Something, this transformation that you go through, even if it is painful to leave behind whatever you need to leave behind, you know, like your shell or your dead body or, you know, your job or your home, friends, people, whoever it is, whatever it is, um, once you leave it behind, you're going to be finding this, this, you know, this chalice full of just refreshment and nutrition. And like, I don't just mean like that literally, although if you find yourself drinking out of some kind of like goblet, that would be really cool. But finding a place where you feel nourished, like really, really like spiritually, emotionally, mentally and even and, and intellectually and physically, all of it. This is your nourishment and it's really going to be coming in really really and with the two of cups you know ace of cups two of cups whatever you're alchemizing either with that person or with this new aspect of yourself that you're getting acquainted with that's how you're going to be finding this ace of cups and you're going to be able to sit in that you're going to be able to sit in that ace of cups energy and it's going to feel so good um and you're going to be moving i feel like Going from the Ace of Cups to the Eight of Cups, you're gonna going to be. This is all happening pretty quickly because that's like a pretty big jump. I mean, you're not going from like Ace of Cups to Ten of Cups, which would, which would be like, wow, right? That's like really zero to sixty. But this Eight of Cups, um, for me, is always a spiritual journey. That's always a card of a spiritual journey, sort of like you know the proverbial forty days in the wilderness. So. I mean, and it's also a leaving behind. Like he's got his back turned to these cups. But he's looking out into the wilderness. And I don't see this card at all as an abandonment. I see it as taking a time out from what has been known to you. Again, it's really similar to the death and the moon energies with this hatching out of this egg. Um, you're going to be looking out to greener pastures where you can find more. Um, where you can find more spiritual nourishment. I don't really know a better way to put this. This is all going to lead you to the Knight of Wands. Look at him. He's charging forward. The sun is shining. He is free. He is bringing his message to the world is really how I'm seeing this particular Knight of Wands. So I feel like you guys have something to share. And maybe you've felt for a lot of your life that your voice has been silenced, that you've been stuck in this egg, that you have some kind of husk dragging you down. Um, and that's really drastically about to shift. And I think the trick here is if you want to go through this kind of ascension process, if you want to improve your ability to communicate, to ride out into the world and to fearlessly face, face the world and to fearlessly share your message and to, and I feel like this is going to have an impact. You're going to be impacting people with this message. Um, this doesn't have to be, you know, like a, a huge big thing, like in a obvious way, you know, you don't have to be starting a business or being in a band or getting on YouTube or whatever. You can be impacting the people around you, but I feel like it's going to be reflected back at you because that's what the, the wands do, right? They, they manifest um, in their surroundings. So that night is going to be going out and he's not going to be sharing his message and manifesting for like no reason. It's going to be impacting people and that's going to be posit positively reflecting back at you, just like all of this water you know, whatever looks at the water and whatever you throw into the water, it ripples out and reflects back at you. So what do you guys need to do to improve? You just need to lean into the flow. With all this water, I feel like this is sort of inevitable for, for you guys and with the death and the moon. Um, so there's not actually a lot that you need to do here other than like, be prepared to be this crow rising up out of his body. It might, you know, this is, it's, this might be freaky because 
anything with the death card is such a transformation, but that's the only thing you need to do here is pre be prepared for this transformation and try to face it with as much equanimity as you, as you can um, and lean into water energy. Trust the flow. You know, it, I, it's winter where I am right now, but if you guys can go somewhere where you can stand with your feet in the water or, you know, even just have a bath, anything to, to be connecting with nature, that'll help you get really grounded and trust in the bigger picture. If you can stand on the beach and sink into the sand as the surf is coming in, that that's the kind of energy I'm talking about. Just trust that you're going to be okay, even if it feels like you're falling, even if it feels like you might get washed away because you're not because you, you guys end up as the Knight of Wands which is such a such an active he's an active character so you're not going to end up you're not going to get washed away you're going to be ha you have a message to share and you're going to get out there and share it so while you're rising up to become that knight of wands you just have to find a way to trust the flow of these events as they unfold and to not be too traumatized if something happens that seems like the end of the world because once you get over the initial shock of whatever just whatever rug just got pulled out from underneath you you'll be able to see i think pretty quickly how you can adapt to that how you can lean into that flow and how that's actually leading you on a path of transformation and how you can make the best of it because you know the easy example is you get fired or you get laid off, you lose your job all of a sudden and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, this is, this is a complete disaster. Um, but, you know, in a few weeks you find that because of that, you are able to start some other new project or you were able to move the fact that, you, or, you know, find a way, way better job. Same thing with relationships, whatever it is that is that you're leaving behind, whatever it is that needs to decay, whatever you need to let go. That's only because that's clearing space for something way better. So, hang in there well those initial like you know well the jenga tower crumbles because there are better things in store for you and we just need to clear the way so that you can bust out and rise up so i think that's all i'm seeing for you guys i hope to see you again soon okay pile two welcome to your reading you guys, I feel, are having some kind of, I don't know if it's an identity crisis, if that's the right word, but I think you're feeling a little bit lost and confused <laughs> and like you don't know how to get back to where you started. I feel like something has been like almost dragged you aside. I feel like it's like like a dragging energy. Something has gotten you off track. Something has distracted you um, and you want to get back to like a center point you want to get back to a place where things were better in the past so which is a little bit weird if this reading is about what you need to do to improve um or what you need to do to ascend or evolve and i didn't really expect anything like this to come up because for you guys it feels like it's not so much that you need to go somewhere it's almost like you need to go back somewhere and i'm saying all of this because the pinnacle card here is the six of cups uh, and in this crow tarot deck, the six of cups is all about kind of the crow returning to the nest, um, you know, returning to your hometown, returning to your family um, to kind of go through a little bit of healing and, you know, retrieving those soul fragments and finding that place where everything was good so that you can go through a little bit of healing. So it might seem a little strange that you need to like go backwards in order to go forwards or to return home in order to kind of move on. But sometimes we really do need that. Um, I was actually thinking of a recent experience I had where I went home for Christmas, um, you know, hang, hung out with my family, uh, saw some friends um, that I haven't seen in a long time, people that I was really, really close with in my past. And it was really, really like healing on a way that is hard to describe because it was like all of these kind of lingering like regrets or guilt or just, you know, how the past can kind of haunt you <laughs> um, and can kind of just have these little tugs on your heartstrings all the time. And if you can go back and 
kind of sit in that energy for a while, a lot of times you can sort all of that out. I mean, and it's not even that you need to do anything. It's just sitting back in your hometown. Like in my case, I was actually in my childhood bedroom. Um, and when I left, I was able to leave feeling like I had less strings holding me back. So you might need to go home, like literally go home. Um, and you don't even need to do anything when you're there. Although if you do cord cutting, you know, rituals, that might be helpful. Or you can do meditations where you imagine retrieving soul fragments and, you know, releasing uh, sludge, like whatever needs to be released. You can imagine blowing that out the top of your head. I'd like to do this meditation where um, when I exhale, I imagine like red and black, like flakes. And that's all like sludgy energy that I don't want. Um, anything that's holding me back, I let that go out the top of my head. And then when I breathe in, I imagine like all of my wayward soul fragments are coming back to me. And when I went home and did that, uh, it was really, really healing for me. I've been feeling a lot more at peace because I live far from home. And, you know, being an expat, there's a lot of kind of uh, complications, especially with your old friends and family and your old life that come with that. So that was really healing for me to go home for a minute and kind of recalibrate. And I think that's the kind of energy you guys are going through. Um, okay, so I kind of talked a lot about the, the pinnacle card and we'll probably come back to that. But let me back up a minute and go back down to the bottom here and kind of address why this is all happening. So you've got the high priest, the high priestess, the chariot and the five of wands. So at the center here with your chariot, uh, the chariot is obviously that that charging energy, that charging head really emotionally driven. And but it's also a little bit wild, a little bit unstable if you imagine like riding in a chariot you know even on a hard packed like sand desert or rock desert it's it's going to be a rocky bumpy wild ride right and moving i feel like this could be right left to right here uh you guys have been getting an infusion from like high priestess energy which is like the divine feminine archetypes feminine magic um which to me is always some kind of spiritual awakening and right now like the planet in general has been getting an infusion of a lot of people talk about this in a lot of different ways, but I think the simplest way to describe it is just divine feminine archetype energy is infusing the planet and causing a rebalancing of masculine and feminine energies. And a lot of people are kind of hoping or thinking or whatever that, that like the feminine will end up like reigning supreme and uh, really take place over the masculine, but I don't think that's the case. And I don't think that would be desirable, right? If we've had masculine energies overbalancing the feminine for thousands of years, why would we want to overcompensate and go the other way? That's going to have just as many problems. There'll be different problems, but there'll just be as many problems. We want everything to be completely in balance. So while these really cosmic streams of data has been streaming down into your crown chakra, um, that has really been energizing you. You've been feeling emotionally charged. You've been feeling like charging forward and doing new things. And I, maybe you guys even did something a little bit impulsive. <laughs> maybe, you know, you ran off with a new lover, um, you know, and found yourself like having this like summer fling and woke up in Aruba and realized what the hell am I doing? Like, what did I just do to my life? Like what, what's going on here? Um, and now you're feeling like you need to get back home and back to your normal life. And it doesn't need to be that extreme. Maybe you've just suddenly found yourself doing like uh, different things, hanging out with different people at home or just noticing that sort of energy in your own emotional and mental body. Like even if you've just been going through your life as normal, because this high priestess energy, which is it's here to help you. It's absolutely here. This is a wonderful card to get. This is this is beautiful energy that is going to level up your life and really <sighs> propel you forward through your spiritual journey and you're riding it you're riding that energy with the chariot but you know this is not without its effects because you got the five of wands over here so this is maybe this has either caused conflict in your external environment or caused it in your own within your own psyche i mean probably both because those reflect each other if you're feeling conflicted and embattled in in yourself if you're having like arguments with yourself about what you should believe or what you should be doing and you just can't make your mind up that's going to reflect itself with conflict with the people around you um and and vice versa right there's no real separating that so and then in the middle here three of cups i mean 
three of swords. I don't know why I just said three of cups, but <laughs> three of swords and the page of swords reversed. And it is always interesting to me when I get a reversal because uh, currently I'm not like doing reversals per se. I just, you know, have my deck so that they're all upright. And because uh, I feel like the cards always contain both polarities, the reversed and the upright energies. And I just kind of read them as it comes to me. So I don't really see a, a need to read reversals. Although sometimes I do, right? This isn't, I'm not saying that there's one right or wrong way to read tarot. I'm just saying that like right now, this is the phase I'm in. And in a few months, maybe I'll switch and I'll start, you know, doing more reversals. So anyway, this is really significant to me that this is in reverse because I don't know how it got in reverse because I shuffle my cards all so that they all should be facing the same direction. So the three of swords is pretty clear, pretty, pretty obvious where you're, you know, this is heartbreak. This is heartbreak and that's coming, it's coming from this foundation of impulsivity in emotional and spiritual chains that change, like, you know, directly from this five of wands, whatever this conflict is, it's really, it's really hurting you. And that's made me think of, you know, if you'd ran off with a lover and done something like that, you know, you probably regretting it. And it's also causing an identity crisis because of the page of swords. This is that really like a wide eyed, innocent type of person. The page of swords reminds me of like a young intellectual, a young academic, you know, just starting off uh, going to university. And you know how when you start university, you think you know everything you think you think you're so fucking smart, right? You're 18. You're so cool. You're, you're going to go off and show the world how smart you are. And then, you know, four or five years later, you graduate university and you you realize that the only thing you know is that you know nothing. Um, so the fact that this page of swords was reversed next to the three of swords is whatever trajectory this has taken you on, you've been riding this wave of this divine feminine infusion of energy and you've been riding this wave out onwards and upwards and you are both hurting because of it and feeling really confused about your own personal identity. I think you're realizing that, you know, if you'd had a moment there where you thought this was all going to be great and all going to be perfect and you were this and you were that and you were going to do this and do that, suddenly you're not so sure. Now you're completely unsure. You guys feel like the rug has been swept out right underneath you and you don't know what is going on. Um, almost like you're floating around completely ungrounded, ungrounded after this chariot energy. And I know what that's like, guys. I remember like last spring, I felt, I felt like I had completely, I was going through, I was calling it a paradigm shift because people were around me were asking like, well, what the hell's with you? You're just like, like, you know, normally you're so confident. Normally you know exactly what you're doing and, you know, you never ask for anybody's opinion and you're just such a defined personality. Uh, but now, now you're not like, doing anything. You're just sitting there all confused and you don't even know what you want to eat for dinner. Suddenly that was me. And that's what people were telling me. And, and it was really weird for me because like, I'm not used to feeling completely like unmoored like that. Uh, and I feel like you guys are, are like that. And I would just tell you that that's, it's just a, like a, a pocket of energy you're going through. It might last a few months. Um, but you know, you're going to come through it. And really the trick is to just wait it out and try not to like, try not to worry about the fact that you feel like you don't have an identity or try not to worry about the fact that suddenly you're so unsure. It's okay. You can just sit there and feel your confusion and feel your, your pain even. And just, you just have to wait it out. Like I, I promise this will pass and we know it'll pass because you're coming up to this six of cups, which is really an invitation to me to go back home or go wherever home is to you. Even if home isn't your technical home, whatever comes to mind when you say home, this could even be a person. It could be like an idea, whatever makes you feel home, whatever is home to you, return to that. It doesn't even have to be physically. You can just kind of sit in that idea of home. And that is where you can go to get realigned, restabilized, so I would say to answer the question at the top of the video is 
what you guys need to do to improve is to actually go home, give yourself a break and get recentered. Um, if you have any loose ends to clean up with your past, go ahead and do that. Like if you need closure with an ex, you know, invite them out for coffee and, you know, don't sleep with them. I mean, I don't think that will help you get closure, right? I'm not that I'm trying to tell you what to do, but you're, the goal here is to be tying up loose ends and getting closure, not to be jumping back into your past. Let me be really clear about that. Actually, this is not an invitation to like go back to a previous way of being and like staying there. This is revisiting your past in order to get closure, tie up any loose ends, retrieve your soul fragments, you know, do your healing. And then, then you can move on. Then you can do whatever it is you want to do next. You're not returning home to like, you know, if you've been away at school, for example, you don't have to return home and like, you know, buy a house in your hometown and like, you know, die there. This is an invitation to go home for the summer, maybe um, even just a weekend, even just a phone call to your mom, right? Just to get whatever it is that you need cleaned up. Go back there and you can enjoy it. This doesn't need to be a painful process. You can actually go back home for your like a family barbecue and, you know, have a great time. And when you leave, you can be feeling much more freer to leave. You won't feel those strings pulling you back. And what happens after that, guys? That would be a whole new reading. So you guys just need to cycle back to kind of uh, clean up past cycles, I think, and then you can be carrying on. And I would like to pull just one moon card here. Let's see if there's any last piece of advice. Hold your vision, fixed moon. There you go. If you've been thinking of, wow, that's actually really, really kind of similar to this chariot energy to me because the chariot in order to be like you know driving a chariot you have to have you have to know what you're where you're going and you have to have that like fixed tunnel vision stare and you have to ride that crap out until you get there and I <laughs> that's actually how I, I see this coming into play here holding your vision keep your eye on the prize keep your eye on the horizon charging ahead you know this chariot can take you straight home so that you can do whatever that is you need to do. And if all of this is like a stumbling block, that's okay because, you know, you can cut these cords, tie this back up, and then you can move on. So keep your long-term vision. I think this is also saying, uh, remember your long-term vision, you know? Like I was just saying, you don't need to go home forever. You're not going there to die there. You're just going there to visit, and then you can be moving on. So handle this stuff, guys. And then it's onwards and upwards from there. So I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. The first card we have to address here is the devil card. It is the only major arcana here, and it kind of is dominating the spread. And the fact that it's at the bottom left here really tells me that this is the first thing. Like, this is what's on your guys' mind. This is your stumbling block. The devil is, to me, always those, people say it's addictions. To me, it's more like compulsions, co obsessive compulsions. Maybe that's just because that's how it manifests for me. Um, compulsive thinking, compulsively micromanaging, compulsively controlling, and not being able to let things go. It's just sort of being stuck in those lower cycles of like controlling and being controlled. It is, it's not a great place to be, right? <laughs> and uh, it, this is also Capricorn energy. And you might want to check out your your entire birth chart, like the whole chart and see where Capricorn energy is because you could be, whatever's going on with your, with your devil, your devil energy might be connected to the Capricorn placements in your birth chart. Let me put it that way. Um, I hope you're not like me and you don't have five planets, including your sun in Capricorn, because that means like everything is devil energy, <laughs> right? So hopefully for you guys, it's more something like maybe if you have your moon in Capricorn, um, you might feel like you fight the devil a lot 
and that your emotions are almost compulsive, that you are always trying to feed, feed emotions, like you're feeding off other people's emotions, or, you know, even if you're just like, you're feeding yourself off of the emotional hits that you get when you're looking through social media, always trying to find those emotional hits, you know, those little adrenaline hits. Um, I don't have my moon in Capricorn, but I know somebody who does, and that's how they talk about it. They always feel like they fight the devil. So check that out. That might give you more information here that's more personalized to you. Um, but okay, so next on this bottom layer of your foundation here of what you need to do to move onwards and upwards is the nine of cups. And look how beautiful and sunny this card is. It is like the total opposite of this devil card. He's got these cups. He's having a feast. You know, this is everything a crow could want. And the sun is shining and it's, and it, wow, the sun is reflected. It's the sun is also coming up from the earth because of these sunflowers. How beautiful is that? Um, the nine, the nine of cups card is always that wish card. And here I really feel like this is like wishful thinking. Um, but like not in a bad way because you wish to be free of the devil. You wish to be free of your addictions and your compulsions and whatever like nagging negative habits, you know, you need to get rid of like you guys already know you need to get rid of them. You don't need me to tell you that. So whatever, you know, you want to move on from, uh, you're kind of sitting there wish like wistfully go, man, I would really wish I could quit smoking or man, I really wish I could stop being so critical of myself or other people or man, I really wish I could just like chill the fuck out and be happy. Um, that's where I feel like you guys are kind of at right now. And you're like prepared to do whatever it takes to level up. You, you really want to move on from this. You guys want to improve. You want to self-actualize. You want to evolve um, because of this ace of swords really is you're willing to cut the cords. I see this. You're willing to wield the sword and to step into that new paradigm. Um, wow. Actually, look, you know, the devil card, eh? devil card is always showing, you know, somebody tied to the devil in here in case it's this little bird chained up to the devil. I feel like you guys are going to be taking the sword and slicing those chains. So don't worry about it. You are definitely freeing yourself of your devil. Um, the one thing I have to say though, next is the second layer of this pyramid moving on up. Um, this is sort of, in this case, what is standing in your way. <sighs> this, this isn't going to be easy and it's not going to be overnight. I do feel like it's a sure thing. Um, but it's not, it's not like you're just going to wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, you know, I beat the devil. It's like, no, you got the 10 of wands and the seven of pentacles, which the card of burden and the card of waiting. <laughs> so you, you guys might have to carry this burden, especially since this burden is like right next to the devil. You might be carrying this burden a little bit longer. I mean, I don't know how long that's going to be. It really depends on how quickly you guys navigate through energies. Uh, and so the more like spiritual, psychological, intellectual, work that you guys have been doing, the quicker you can cycle through these energies. Like if you've had, if you've done a lot of uh, like emotional processing before in your past, then you're going to be able to get through this quicker. Um, it's like uh, people who have bipolar disorder, for example, um, when you don't know that you have bipolar and you're just cycling through these mood episodes all the time, they're like really impossible to control and they last a long time and they're just protracted and terrible. But the more experienced people get at uh, kind of managing that, the quicker they can tampen down the severity of their episodes and they can get out of them quicker. So it's like that. You guys can learn to work through these quicker and how quick, how quickly you move on from this devil energy is going to depend entirely on your own like internal development. Um, but I can tell you that it's not going to be immediate because of the seven of pentacles, which is always just like, like, like that weight waiting. Um, also like waiting and preparing in this case, the waiting is the preparing, right? You're going to like, look at this crow. He's got all his pentacles all up in that tree. He's all ready to go, but you know, nothing's happening yet. Like his, you know, his girlfriend's not here. You know, they don't have any eggs. Uh, in fact, you know, there's no leaves on the trees. He's like waiting. He's waiting. It's the fall right now. So you guys are still have to go through your winter. Um, and that's actually really cool because I always see the Ten of Wands as it's not just that burden card, but it's also harvest because this is actually, I mean, sure, he has all this shit to carry, but he also is going to have all that stuff when he gets home. 
So you guys are kind of into like a deep <laughs> um, cocooning type meditative energy. Seven of Pentacles is always meditative to me because uh, I used to get the Seven of Pentacles a lot when I had to sit around waiting for my life to begin. And so I would just sit there and meditate like for hours every day because I had literally nothing else I could do. So you guys are kind of in your winter hibernation. You're gathering your resources. You're getting information that you need. I mean, like shit, if you guys are trying to get out of a, out of a situation, even if it's, it can be a job a relationship or like a housing situation, if you're trying to get out of it, you are going to get out of it, but you got to get your, your shit together first. You got to get your resources. Um, you got to make sure, you know, you have money in the bank or a place to stay or, you know, help moving, whatever it is, another job lined up. Um, and that's what you guys are working on doing right now. You're in this hibernation process where you're gathering all of your resources and getting ready to go. Um, and, you know, the winter will pass and spring will come. And at the top is the Four of Cups in reversed, which is a really interesting card to see, like, in this pinnacle position. Um, and the fact that it, it is reversed is interesting to me because this deck should have been entirely upright. Um, I wasn't planning on reading reversal today, but... The other one of the other readings had a reversal as well. Um, it is a mystery to me how these cards are reversing themselves inside of their box. But there you go. Um, but it, it is cool that it came out reversed because the Four of Cups, if it was upright, wouldn't really be that great for me. I would have to give you guys some bad news kind of saying that, you know, this isn't really going anywhere good. But since the Four of Cups is in reverse, I feel like that Four of Cups energy is being released. You're going to be able to move on from it and everything is getting reset. You know, the water's going to be flowing out of these cups. Everything, your your life is going to be getting turned upside down, um, but in a good way because you guys are trying to release that devil energy. So, you know, the four of cups is normally kind of somebody sulking under a tree, you know, not appreciating how good he's got it. Um, really just that, that stagnancy. It is so stagnant. It's like stale water. Um, with the Four of Cups reversed, I feel that's more... I mean, the water's going to run out of the cup. It's not going to be stale. It's going to be gone. And then you're going to be able to refill your cup. It is like... It's such a reset. Just the fact that it's upside down, you're going to be able to be seeing everything from a different perspective. I actually just had a thought. I don't typically use the guidebook for this deck, but I just checked. Um, I felt called to check. And the blurb in the book about... The Four of Cups reversed, according to the creator of this deck, talks about all of your hard work has paid off. <laughs> Which is perfect. I see why I had to go check that, because I maybe wouldn't have interpreted the card quite that way. But the creator of this deck intends it to be interpreted that way. The Four of Cups is your hard work has paid off and you know you're moving on to new horizons. And your hard work, you've definitely done the hard work, guys. I was just talking about how the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles is, you know, your preparation stage in your winter hibernation. So your hard work is going to be paying off and this is all going to be good. You guys are going to be moving on up. So I guess to sum up an answer to you, the main question is what can you do to improve? It's recognize what devil energy you need to, you want to let go of. Cut those cords. Definitely lean into the Nine of Cups definitely lean into your wish because your wish is at the center here and it's going to propel you forward. You're going to have to go through a period of a winter, like a winter period where you have to prepare and get your resources together, but your hard work is going to pay off in the end. That sums that up. And I will pull a moon card for you here. Uh, that one. Oh, two. Two just jumped out. Let's see what we got here. Communication is key, and you're very close to achieving your goal. Sorry, let me get this to focus. New moon in Gemini. Communication is key. Gibbous moon. You're very close to achieving your goal. Perfect. Your hard work is about to pay off, guys. You're very close to achieving your goal. That is, that's so cool that I was directed to uh, check out the, the guidebook for that to find out that it literally says like those exact words, your hard work is about to pay off. 
you're very close to achieving your goal. That is, that is so synchronous. I love it. And communication is key. New moon in Gemini. The, uh, that really actually brings me back to this Ace of Swords. So I think this is communicating both with yourself about what you want to be releasing and what your wishes are and communicating with the people around you. If there's people you need to cut out or if there's people you need to hold accountable or just people that you need to un you want them to understand how you're feeling, you need to let your voice be heard. You need to let your voice be heard. Also, Gemini season is going to be coming up in a little bit here, in a few months. Um, maybe that is when your hard work is going to start paying off. So I don't know, guys. Um, watch for Gemini. Watch for Gemini. I don't, I don't typically talk a lot about astrological stuff in my readings, but for some reason, with the devil energy, the Capricorn, and that Gemini, that's going to vary a lot, uh, depending on you guys' birth charts when you're watching this and your personal situation. But those are just some clues to watch out for if you keep getting similar messages, if you keep hearing other things about Capricorn and Gemini. Um, pay attention to that. All right, guys, I think that's all I'm seeing here. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys again soon.